good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Rapid Chess here, and uh, today we'll quickly, quickly look at the game between uh, Manus Carlson and Alexander Grishuk from 2009 Linares, which is uh, which has been uh, like um, St. Louis today, uh, the most prestigious event, uh, and uh, then it was postponed for one year. And as uh, uh, these chess players say, that if you ever postpone a chess tournament for one year, it never revives. So this happened with Linares as well. Um, so now we have a lot of other tournaments, of course. So let's see this game. E4 played by Magnus. C5, D6. So Alexander is um, uh, known for playing Neidorf a lot. Uh, he switches to E5 and uh, basically is one of the most uh, uh, prominent theoreticians uh, in this chess elite. Uh, knight f6, knight c3, a6. So this is like knight of defense or a knight of attack, as uh, Anish Giri would say. Bishop e2. Uh, this is, I think, uh, most uh, beloved uh, system by Magnus. Uh, he plays the Skarpov variation uh, or Opachensky uh, against uh, Sicilian very often. and. Uh, uh, I tried myself uh, to play this, uh, but I'm, I'm, I just don't understand this, honestly. Uh, but Magnus plays it um, just uh, amazingly well. So very calm move. E6, castles, A4. Uh, this, at some point white has to play like this. Uh, <clears throat> today we see more um, bishop c4, bishop uh, a2 variations uh, and pawn normally is placed on a3, but a4 is um, uh, just more standard plan. And knight c6. Um, again, I'm not the big theoretician myself, but I think this is uh, a bit obsolete move today. Uh, they play more f uh, for quicker b5, which Alexander didn't play this, this game. Bishop e3, castle f4. So this uh, position uh, <coughs> has been played by me with both colors, I think. And bishop f3. Uh, uh, another idea is to play g4 at some point uh, and g5. So this position occurred like 2000 times. Bishop f8. Uh, black prepares to play e5 and uh, if possible to put the knight on e5 and uh, mm, uh, harass the pieces. Queen d2, um, <coughs> rook b8. Um, you, this uh, rook on e8 is aligned with this bishop, so you want to move it in order to play b5. And also, both these knights control the b5, so you need more pieces to you know push this. We have to uh, standard maneuver. Uh, sometimes it's um, uh, combined with uh, playing a5 and bishop to b6, uh, kind of binding the black's position. Uh, for me, uh, I tried a lot, but uh, really hard to do all this uh, somehow, not in time to play. But Magnus has a different uh, idea. He puts queen here and wants to put the bishop to <coughs> b6 e5 and Magnus took at this time it was <coughs> an old team sorry um, takes um, knight, b, knight b3 and knight b4 uh, another alternative was uh, bishop to e6 taking more control on the d5 square and knight b4 is good. And uh, bishop a7. Uh, again, uh, this move wouldn't come to my mind, but uh, really mean move. Uh, attacking the rook, which uh, was in good position, and only now plays bishop b6. So now kind of winning an important tempo. Uh, bishop b6. And rook d1 just developing uh, the position of white is really smooth 
you can argue that this bishop here is bad, but it uh, uh, it will open up when uh, knight will move to d5. This uh, square uh, where both sides are like struggling to control, and uh, it is now in firm control of white, uh, of uh, white pieces. Bishop e6 and knight d5, so creating a very dangerous pass pawn in the center. So you have to take no other basically I, uh, no other option e4 and uh, minus plus d6 uh, uh, again not easy to spot uh, uh, when you play in blitz of course yeah just you want to automatically move your bishop but uh, uh, just with every moving uh, ahead <coughs> this pawn becomes stronger and knight c5 again winning tempo and finally bishop e2 and again black has to spend a move to do something with queen so they exchange queens queen d5 and a5 now this pawn um, uh, protects the bishop and uh, again it gives uh, white a lot of tactical ideas so they exchanged and <coughs> rook b8. Rook e to c it was shown by ancient, but of course very hard to play this move uh, in the time trouble. Definitely there was one. Uh, and uh, before, anyways, I think white has winning a uh, winning advantage. Yeah, it just black doesn't have anything. They can't move. This pawn is attacked. This pawn is attacked. Engine says that okay, uh, rook c6 will kind of. Uh, give some give some room but uh, it's just I think hopeless uh, and uh, in this position uh, Magnus uh, played an excellent move which is rook takes f6 uh, he was very well known for uh, this exchange sacrifices like 10 years ago and he was winning guys like Topolov uh, with just uh, bishop against rook and um, so this is one of the examples rook d7 now rook is hanging <coughs> pawn on f6 is attacked and uh, um, there is no i mean you cannot defend uh, let's say attack this rook because of this check and uh, capturing and winning another very important tempo so Grisha played a five, just simply improving position. Black, black cannot do anything. C four. So he takes, takes, and in this position, you know probably this uh, move by Shirov, uh, Bishop H three. So it appears that uh, Magnus has this move of his own, like Bishop A six, just beautiful, and nothing you can do here. So he just takes the pawn. So let's take the the bishop. Yeah, and d7 here, c6. Yeah, we take c7 and uh, just uh, queening. Yeah, beautiful idea. <coughs> so Grisha didn't take it. It was the other way around. D7 and in this position, uh, finally Black resigned. Yeah, excellent win this beautiful move bishop to a6 and uh, like classical victory by Magnus. all right guys thank you very much and see you next time